Hi students, in the last class we discussed up to simple permanent tissue, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Today we can study the remaining parts. Okay. In the textbook one activity is given. Today I will explain you the activity, another day we can do it in the laboratory. So here I am taking a leaf. You can see two surfaces here. This is the upper surface and this is the lower surface of the leaf. So in this leaf, you, from this leaf you can take a small P. Okay. Here a transparent part you can see. This is the leaf P. Place this leaf P in a wash glass containing water. Okay. After that, Add one or two drops of a red color stain that is known as safranin. It is a red color stain because you know this is transparent. It is not easily visible. So when safranin is added, the cells of this leaf peel take that stain into the cell and it becomes red in color. So while observing through the microscope, we can easily identify the cells. Look. After staining, remove the peel from the wash glass and place it in a glass slide and a cover slip place over it and observe it through the microscope. Now you can see the lateral view like this. Some elongated cells you can see. Okay. Okay. This is the lateral view of the leaf peel. Elongated cells which are very closely arranged without any intercellular space. This outer layer of cell, this is known as the epidermal cell. Okay, this outer layer of cell is known as the epidermal cells. Its main function is protection, providing protection to the plant body. This epidermal cell is present throughout the plant body, the aerial parts as well as in the roots. And in the aerial parts, some of the epidermal cells secrete a waxy layer also. Waxy layer is water resistant. It has certain functions. First one, it prevents excess loss of water. Okay. Second function, it prevents the entry of parasitic fungi into the cell because it is present on, on the outer surface. Then it also prevents the plant from mechanical injuries. These are the functions of the waxy layer over the epidermal cells. And in the case of desert plants, there is a very thick waxy layer and that chemical is known as the cutin. That waxy layer is made up of cutin. And this cutin actually very thick in nature in the case of desert plants. Why, Why is it so uh, thick there? Because you know in deserts the temperature is very high. So there may be chances of excess loss of water to prevent that waxy layer is present there. Okay. Then it is the leaf peel. So in addition to this epidermal elongated cells, normal cells, you can see two other cells also. Okay. Here I draw only two cells. Many are there. And these kidney shaped cells are known as the guard cells. These are the guard cells. And at the center of the guard cell you can see a small opening that is known as the stomata. This is the stomatal pore or stomata. So what are stomata? Stomata are tiny openings, tiny pores present on the epidermis of the leaf. Especially on the lower epidermis. Then why these stomata are present on the leaf? What are the functions of stomata? What's the role of it? Stomata 
help in the exchange of gases okay oxygen and carbon dioxide that exchange is regulated by stomata or it takes place through the stomata second function is transpiration it also helps in transpiration what is transpiration it is the loss of water in the form of water vapor so from the plant water get lost in the form of water vapor in gaseous form that is known as transpiration okay it is also regulated by stomata so stomata help in the exchange of gases as well as in transpiration now the epidermal cell of the root there also i told the entire plant body the epidermal cell is present in the case of roots the function of epidermal cell is absorption of water okay and they are the epidermal cells carry certain a small narrow root hairs also these root hairs increases the absorptive surface area okay and did you observe the stem of young plant and the older plant is it same no in the case of older plants the stem outer stem that is very thick in nature that means when the plant grows older the epidermal cell is replaced by another cell that is known as the secondary meristem it is called secondary meristem and it cut off different layers of cells on the outer side and these different layers of cells form bark or cork this is known as cork this it is uh, dead cell these are dead cells okay and different layers are also there and it is very thick because of the presence of a chemical called suberin a chemical called suberin is present in the cork cells which make them impervious to water these are dead cells different layers are there and also it is very thick and impervious to water okay that is all about the epidermal cells clear now we can move to the next part that is complex permanent tissue simple permanent tissue you know it consists of only one type of cells in it but here in the case of complex permanent tissue different types of cells are there more than one type of cell is present in the case of complex permanent tissue in plants there are two complex permanent tissue that is xylem and phloem okay this both this xylem and phloem together known as the vascular bundles it is known as the vascular bundles why because this xylem and phloem helps in the transport of materials water minerals and food that takes place through xylem and phloem so it is known as the vascular bundles or conducting tissues and this xylem it consists of four different types of cells four elements are there these are tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers fibers means sclerenchyma okay and tracheids and vessels form a tubular system these are arranged from roots to leaves through which the water can transport so the main function of xylem is transport of water it takes place only in one direction so tracheids and vessels help in the vertical conduction of water and the next element that is xylem parenchyma which helps in the sideways conduction of water xylem parenchyma has one more function it helps to store the food material and xylem fibers you know fibers sclerenchyma dead cells so the function is mechanical support only okay then the next one is phloem 
phloem is responsible for the transport of food material in the plants. It also consists of different elements. These are sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. Sieve tubes and companion cells are there. Okay, here the food transport takes place through these elements and most of the elements are living cells except phloem fibers and they have perforated walls. Okay, these sieve tubes have perforated walls through which the food material is transported and one main difference is that here the food can transport in both directions. But in xylem, water transport only in one direction. Okay. That is all about the different types of plant tissues. We, we already studied meristematic tissue, simple permanent tissue, complex permanent tissue. So, next class we can study animal tissues. Okay.